Hi, my name is Søren. In this video I'm going to do some advanced machining. Uh, I'm going to uh, regrind a crankshaft, bore out uh, two cylinders, uh, grind them and hone them all on the lathe. And I'm also going to turn a couple of uh, wrist pin bushings. The video is going to be a bit um, coitus interruptus. Uh, because uh, I had to get the bike out of the shop as soon as possible, so um, I didn't really have time to do the filming part also. Um, the first part is fairly detailed, uh, I did manage to get that uh, somewhat right. Uh, but the last part is, um, yeah, it's very primitive. <laughs> but I hope you will enjoy it anyway. The crankshaft is cast in one piece and the lubrication passages are machined afterwards and from where they are machined they are um, plugged with a grub screw. Somehow one of these grub screws is always stuck and the, the screw is fairly soft so uh, usually you simply make a round hole putting an allen key to it. So I don't want to put too much heat to it, you can see the previous owner had put some heat to the crankshaft but I don't want to put too much to it so instead I bore it out and then I can pull out the, the thread like a string. The passages have to be cleaned, uh, the, the, the filtering system on the Marinis aren't one of the best ones to say the least uh, so uh, after a 30, 40 thousand kilometers, you get these um, deposits of crud. You can see here it's uh, fairly soft, sometimes it's uh, hard as concrete. I simply bore it out with a drill um, and use some brake cleaner for, for the initial uh, cleanup. Um, when I'm done with the machining, uh, I'm uh, putting the crankshaft in an ultrasonic cleaner so I will make sure it's uh, completely clean in the passages To mount the crankshaft eccentric uh, for the grinding procedure I initially came up with this idea um, the crankshaft mounted in the three jaw chuck uh, that then would be mounted eccentric in the four jaw chuck. And it would probably have worked also, but I was a bit afraid that the gravitational force would um, work against me, so I would have some unevenness to the surface of the crank pin. And not the least, I was afraid that the, this heavy weight would cause uh, damage to the spindle bearings. So instead I came up with this very, very simple solution. And it's actually an experiment that turned out to be much, much better than expected. It's simply a piece of aluminum with a hole bored through the, that I made on the 4 jaw chuck. Initially I also wanted to put a plug in here and have a center in this end. But it turned out to be completely unnecessary because it's a very rigid setup. Um, I haven't been able to measure or feel any flex or instability to it. Uh, and with the forces you apply to the workpiece uh, during a grinding procedure, it's no problem. At least uh, it, it worked out fine. Uh, and I think I will use this method uh, in the future also. To uh, the mounting procedure is uh, I did like following. First of all, I uh, put in the uh, the crankshaft uh, and made sure that that uh, the crank pin was running true. Of course, one should also uh, make sure that the crankshaft is in line with the. Um, with the lathe bed, so you won't have any tape or any other crookedness to the uh, crank pin. I do like this. I take uh, this diameter and subtract this one, divide it into two, and with two gauges, uh, I'm able to, yeah, true it out. 
First of all, I make sure that the gauge is on center height with the crankshaft. Next, I set the zero for the uh, the large diameter. And for the travel for the, um, the cross slide. I then move the, uh, the gauge to the small diameter and move the cross slide till I reach 1.465 millimeters. That's about here. And of course it should be reading zero now at the crankshaft. And it's off as you see. So it needs to go this way to be in line with the waves. The jaws are loosened just a bit. I hope you don't get seasick from this uh, angle <laughs> of the camera, but in order to have both gauges in, in view, I'm setting it a bit on skew. Um, okay, we're going to 1.465 again. We are within uh, one hundredth of a millimeter, and I think that is sufficient. In any case, I'm going to check it uh, um, from the other side also. Um, again, I'm making sure that the gauge is reasonable level and uh, of course of center height. And then of course it's the same procedure on this side. 1.465 It's about there. Well, again, uh, about one hundreds of a millimeter. So I'll call that uh, good enough. <laughs> and everything is of course repeated with the crankshaft turned 90 degrees, center height zeroing out and measuring these 1.465 millimeters. And finally the jaws are tightened and the run out is checked and I do a recheck of everything once again. So I'm <laughs> completely sure that uh, everything is running true. I simply align the grinding wheel with the face of the chuck and then dress it. I'm sorry I, I forgot to uh, take footage of the dressing but from there on it's uh, yeah simply to uh, grind but of course with the utmost care I don't use any uh, lubricant or cooling, uh, partly because it's a terrible mess and partly because I don't want it to transport grinding dust into the sensitive areas of the lathe. And for the final polish I will use some emery tape. <laughs> I'm quite happy with that. Before I get any comments about uh, protection of the lathe, I actually have a uh, rag on the lathe during the grinding process. Um, I, I, I use a rag that I attach with some magnets and overspray it with water so uh, it, it will catch the grinding dust. Uh, I removed it uh, during the polishing process, simply because I was a bit afraid that it might get caught in uh, in uh, chalk with these high revs. Yeah, and another thing, 
Yeah, I deliberately haven't shown you my uh, support grinder. Uh, I would probably get a thousand comments on shop safety uh, because it doesn't have the protection it ought to have. Uh, I'm not quite finished with it. Uh, so for that reason, I don't want to show it to you. When it's done, I throw it into the ultrasonic cleaner. I cover the the ultrasonic cleaner with a couple of blankets because it's a terrible noise uh, and uh, also because uh, the solution is heated so to give it some insulation um, it helps with uh, some blankets. The cylinders are mounted to my faceplate which I modified with these uh, drilled and tapped holes. This gives several advantages. First of all, it's uh, very easy to set the cylinder up. It's almost centered only with the screws. And second of all, you get rid of any clamping equipment that may come in the way. And third of all, um, it's mounted in the same way as it is in the engine. So any out of roundness you have um, in the engine when the, uh, when the screws or the bolts are tightened, uh, you will also have here, so you should get a fairly round result when the when the cylinder is finally mounted in the engine. First, I run the gauge through the cylinder to see if it's square. That should never be a problem, but just in case. But it's also to see how much wear it has. Then, of course, it's a matter of uh, making it run true. Yeah, there are some unevenness to the cylinder bushing. It's uh, 400 of a millimeter. That's plenty sufficient. To bore out the cylinders, I've made this boring bar. And I'm always finding sensor height simply by measuring. I know my sensor height is 175 millimeters. So that's an easy way to find it. And for this task I'm of course setting my lathe stop. Piston is of course measured. And the caliber is set to zero. The final turning pass I make with a very shallow cut and a low feed rate, so I will get the smoothest finish possible. Um, I leave uh, around four hundredths of a millimeter for the grinding process. And grinding I do with this uh, Metabo straight grinder mounted in my homemade uh, holder. It has this uh, long neck that will go all the way through the cylinder. In order to have a finer adjustment of the depth of cut, I set the compound slide to 5.7 degrees. That way I have a travel of 200 of a millimeter in the y direction uh, every time I move the slide uh, one tenth of a millimeter. And I usually write it down so I don't get confused during the the work. And of course the the grinder is straightened up, which is simply done like this. And by the way, the holder is simply made uh, so that when uh, the tool holder is all the way to the to the compound slide. Uh, it's on center height. Before I do any grinding, I make sure that there's no uh, liquid uh, anywhere on the lathe. Um, I don't want any oil to catch the, the the grinding dust and then drag it into the waste. And for these for the cylinders, I use a bit of coolant. 
Uh, mostly because it dampens vibrations. The cylinders are now cylindrical and on measurement. So the only reason for honing is to get this crosshatch pattern. I use a relatively coarse stone and some uh, diesel for lubricant. I set it up like this to uh, make sure that I have pressure, equal pressure all the way around. So I don't, if I did it like this, I may have some uh, pressure downwards. So that's the, the only reason for doing it like this. Um, I won't remove enough material that you can measure it. Uh, I will only ruin the nice surface after grinding. And I adapt uh, the back and forth speed with the drill speed. So I will make sure that I have this 45 degree uh, cross hatch pattern. Finally, a quick uh, walk through the process of making the wrist pin bushing. First, I chamfer the ID so I can put a center in uh, the bronze tubing. Then I rough the OD. Next, I drill and uh, turn the ID. I don't have a drill big enough to pre-drill for, for the reaming so I have to uh, turn the ID. Then I ream the ID. Uh, the reaming I do again once the bushing is mounted in the connecting rod because it shrinks a bit when it's uh, pressed into the connecting rod. Then the outside diameter is finished. Uh, it's finished with a couple of hundreds uh, oversized, so it will press fit into the connecting rod. The edges of the OD are chamfered with a file, and I, of course, uh, chamfer every bushing uh, during the parting process before I part them completely off. And now all the safety fanatics should look away because I chamfer the ID uh, on the drill press simply holding the bushing with my bare fingers. Here I'm turning an eccentric yeah, jig uh, to hold the bushings so I will be able to make a groove inside the um, the bushings uh, for lubrication. It's simply a cutoff from a previous project. It has a um, milled face on the OD, so when I turn this face to one of the jaws, uh, the center hole will be eccentric. The bushings have been put in the freezer while I'm heating the connecting rod so it will be easier to, to press it in which I simply do in my wonderful Schlegel vise. The hole for the oil was drilled and I used a piece of wood to make sure that I didn't uh, damage the inside of the bushing. To be able to ream the bushings again I had to come up with some sort of solution because the only ream I have is uh, with a Morse taper. And my milling machine has a Schauplin W20 spindle. 
So I turned an old badly worn Morse tape of reduction sleeve to a straight 20 millimeter. That is the biggest uh, collet uh, that I have. So I will be able to mount it in, in the milling machine. I'm sorry to say that that's all for now, folks. Um, I will hopefully find time in the future to make a, a more detailed video about the same subject. And especially for you Marini guys, I would like to make a, a, a more detailed video about the Marini engine. Hope you enjoyed after all. Uh, thanks for watching.